This is a spaceship factory. In these Category A clean rooms, machines are built that their designers hope will unlock the secrets of the universe. That's an interferometer. That's the interferometer. That's the interferometer. There's the focus mechanisms right here. Yeah, there's, the, there's one focus mechanism there. This, there's this three is the focus actual mechanism. focus mechanism. This is the, this is the flight that's hardware. The flight hardware. Wonderful. Today, the team are midway through assembling their latest mission, the giant Kepler Space Telescope. But it's not scheduled to fly until 2009. So currently, the spaceship is in bits. This is where the primary mirror is going to sit, on top of this. So that measures how well you've got the optics aligned. Is that That's right? right. You put light through the optical system, and you can measure how well it's working. Leading the NASA team assembling the space telescope is Bill Baruki. It's magnificent. It's just wonderful to see it come together. It's, we've been planning this for years and years. And so to actually see it here, this is the flight equipment. This will go into space. It's this that will make our discovery. So I'm really delighted to see this and to see how well long it is and to see all the details that seem to be right. When Kepler flies, it will undertake a four-year mission to seek out new worlds. But it won't be looking for wobbles. Instead, Kepler will be hunting for planets that pass in front of their stars, creating a telltale wink. If you're looking at the star, it seems to wink a little bit. It gets dimmer for a while, like it closed its eye for a second and then opened it. This is because the planet moved in front of it and blocked some of its light. It happens in our solar system, too. We had a transit, a planet, Mercury, going across the sun fairly recently. We could see that with a telescope. For the wink technique to work, a space telescope is essential. Free from the interference of Earth's atmosphere, it gives Kepler an uninterrupted view of a very special part of the galaxy. Kepler only looks at one area of the sky. It's a good area for us in that it has a huge number of stars. Kepler will scan the same 100,000 stars over its entire four-year mission constantly measuring the brightness of each one. And from day one, it will be sensitive enough to detect the wink of an Earth-sized planet crossing its sun, tens of light years away. It's always very exciting because we've always wanted to know, are there lots of Earths out there? Now, Jeff Mars and Stephen Audrey and all these other people are extremely competitive. They want to find planets. They want the answers, too. What well, we all do, and the best way to do that is to cooperate. There's a bit of a race going on, but it's a, it's a delightful race. The competition is lovely, and it makes us get up in the morning, go to work, and work a little harder. So who's going to find the first Earth-side object? We are. 